And then he said, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. I can't catch a break, guys. Yeah. Get them the fuck away from me. I can't I can't be around those guys. People think, oh well, cleaning your room, that's just a cliche. It's like, yeah, really, eh? Just go ahead and try it. If people had any idea how powerful sleep is for healing from anything, and the fact that it's free. My mind is absolutely bulletproof, solid as a rock. Podcast. Boom, more live. So, Brown, how's things? All good, dude. How are you? All good, all good. So, plan of attack for today, we are going to go for auto- atomic habits. Um, thanks to everybody who is listening. If you are listening, make sure do the old like, share, tell a friend, all that good stuff. Um, the book Atomic Habits, Brandon, any major insights? And we've got a, a phone full of notes there. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, I could start listing off all the stuff, but I mean, the big, the big takeaway really is like how much of your life is um, habitualized and automatic. And I was kind of outside the book a little bit, but an idea that I was uh, uh, listening to recently was they were basically saying that one of the ways that you can kind of um, stave off mental illness, um, you know, to do it like, forgetfulness and dementia in later life is you know like taking different routes to work so not falling into the trap of building habits and becoming an automatic being but trying to keep that level of autonomy by doing stuff that keeps you conscious kind of thing which i think is a very very interesting idea and then obviously the balance to that being with atomic habits is trying to become automatic where you want and then autonomous where you'd like so, you know, turning the stuff, hard stuff automatic, but making, you know, mm-hmm. the the enjoyable stuff. Um, I'm sure you've all seen that um, that movie Click, you know, Adam Sandler. And he basically has the remote. I don't, think, I don't think that's the type of movie that everyone has seen. If you haven't seen Click, I spoiler alert. It's like Adam Sandler decent. gets decent. I cried in that decent. movie. That was a great movie. <laughs> I can't even remember. I can roughly remember there was a remote involved. but Oh, my God. But click. Anyway, basically what happens is he ends up um, hitting the fast forward button through like different things. It's like things that, you know, would somewhat um, be an inconvenience, you know, like traffic and showering and sickness and this kind of stuff. And long story short, he ends up essentially fast forwarding through his life and only limit, living in very, um, very small moments. Because, again, like we, we are so unconscious and our our habits and our routines are a really really massive part of our life and who we are and take away a message from the movie learn to enjoy these things stop fast forwarding through your life so. yeah no that's actually such a good point that um, brings to mind something jordan pearson said as well he's like these are the moments these are monotonous moments kind of how you greet your how you greet your wife when you come home from work how you act around the dinner table how you act around the breakfast table these kind of monotonous day-to-day tasks is that are 80 percent of your life so if you get them right you're doing you're doing well and as you mentioned like you know this kind of concept of being more conscious or being less conscious like we're so unconscious a lot of the time meaning that we just revert back to our default mode like we're just kind of said we're not really engaged on the on the way to work it's just kind of we take this certain path like you know the gear stick moves the car drives um and we can't just be so unconscious so it's trying to be maybe more purposeful during them kind of monotonous uh, day-to-day tasks per se that's one thing I would say about the commute now that you've uh, kind of pressured me onto, which is great. Like I really uh, flew through um, about, I'd say, two hours in the last day of Atomic Habits just trying to finish it out because I knew the podcast was coming. So I, And so, you know, that dead time, hopefully we can make people a little bit more conscious with, you know, audiobooks. So it's like now that drive to work, hopefully you're a little bit more conscious trying to take information in. And so that journey to work becomes a conscious learning experience. And so it's not as monotonous, monotonous, hopefully. And so you don't just tune it, but you can actually switch on. And this podcast, hopefully for some of you guys, will leave the podcast today with a book for next week, an audio book. And you can either listen to that book along with us, ready for the next podcast, or you can just tune into the next podcast and find the notes. But again, it's our way of just kind of leveraging ourselves in to try and cover an audio book, maybe once a week or every two weeks or whatever it is, and just kind of, kind of be... You know, consuming a little bit more information. Same way I fell into the, you know, the either the music slump or the podcast entertainment slump, and so it's good to just kind of have a, a good reason to be uh, going into, you know, a little bit heavier material. Yeah, no, hundred percent. That's kind of one of the reason I wanted to get back into the podcast is because, like, you know, imagine we did read a book or listen to a book 
once a week or once every two weeks for the next mm-hmm. year. Like think of even for us, our own personal development, how impactful and how powerful that will be. And then anybody who chooses to listen along with us. Um, so with that said, guys, anyone that does plan on listening to the podcast over the next couple of weeks and months, do let us know. Send us a message, drop a comment, let us know what books you'd like us to cover. So we got Atomic Habits today. I know I'm going to do Outwitting the Devil with Chris next. Uh, I'm probably going to split the episodes up so we can cover more content um, by myself and yourself can be difficult to get everybody together at the one time i'm just thinking um, there sorry you're gonna have a lot of books to get through between me and chris i've got half yeah. yours yeah but i said i i can i kind of like the challenge i think yeah i'd be much better off i've always um i'm the type of person that collects collects more books than i read so um you know what uh waiting for this 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 lovely retirement to like eventually sit down and read them all type thing so um to start start listening to them today um so honestly books are so powerful like there's been a handful of books that have generally like changed my life or just completely shifted the power my paradigm like how i view the world and my beliefs around the world and what's possible what's not possible different having different tools um so i can you know adapt to different situations or different challenges and you know it's, it's so powerful like you can literally get like a lifetime's worth of experience in in a couple of hours like i really do think it is it is immense some books i find are, are a little bit long and drawn out they could have got to the point a lot quicker but i think it's all part of the all part of the fun um, well, i was listening to atomic habits today and obviously i've already listened to the book the power of habit and the whole idea with the pair of them obviously cue routine reward and obviously what we opened up with which is you know like you know this automatic process in your life and that's essentially like i mean that's the principle of the book but something and again it's a it's a problem that i have constantly when i'm listening to books is like i just assume that I, I get it, you know, I get it. And um, when you're listening to chapter by chapter, each one, you know, they have these little golden nuggets, these wee two or three lines or sentences or ideas in each chapter. And they are sometimes the most valuable bits to me. So it's not, it's like, you know, it's like really delving deep and getting through the whole book and not even listening to the synopsis, but really listening to what the author, you know, chiseled and hammered and refined down and got these, you know, their best bits into the book. It's like, and with the power to have it, like some of the stories and analogies and ideas that aren't even like you know they're just kind of the pattern building around this big idea but sometimes they are the most useful stuff i find yeah no that is very very true um and let me actually going to kick things in, in what do we quote here because anyone doesn't know hasn't heard about the book so it's atomic habits by james clear obviously and um, here's one of my favorite quotes from the book uh, making a choice that is one percent better or one percent worse seems insignificant in the moment but over the span of moments that makes up a lifetime these choices determine the difference between who you are and who you could be. Success is the product of daily habits, not once in a lifetime transformations. So anyone can see the the chart on the screen, this kind of the trajectory of this whole one percent better every day. So the concept is, you know, if you get one percent better every day, you're thirty seven times better off in a year. Whereas the opposite is also true, and this is kind of what people forget, and this is kind of why I feel like maybe we need a little more urgency for some people who are genuinely and deeply unhappy with their current life situation or the current habits that they're engaging in is that you don't stay the same. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. And that is really something that I feel like people need to be a little bit more aware of. Like you're not staying the same. You're, you know, you're getting better, you're getting worse, you're growing or you're dying. Um, I think that's that's very very interesting and kind of having the having the chart there i think kind of really drives that point home like you know like you really like growth can be exponential but it also goes the opposite way like if you're engaging in a in a negative habit every day with the same consistency as you would with a a more positive habit or a a habit that's going to move you in the direction that you want to go like things can get a lot worse (laughs) in a year you know i think people seen that over covid maybe you know small nutrition change you know being a little bit closer to the fridge walking from home this is what i've heard again and again and again i'm guilty too but um you know then it's 20 pounds 30 pounds just from that one change having that extra snack or two every day you know i eat healthy but you know this is the this is the outcome because again habits compound in a positive manner but they also compound in a negative manner that's good yeah and let's let's just let's just focus on that chart as well um and bring on one of the quotes from the book that i really like which is the the end of the path is the least crowded and so it's like you know ever like that we've all been there you know january 1st or you know maybe even february 1st of the new year and the gym is absolutely packed everybody's there and so the thing about it is is like having the consistency to show up on your bad days that first bad day that that then people miss is like that's where 
the vast majority of people fall off. The person who just goes, oh, they look shit, but she'll get it done anyway. It's like, generally, it's like, that is literally, that's all it takes. Like, anybody who I would outperform in the gym, for talk's sake, now doing this for eight years, is like, it's literally, it's not a matter of talent, although maybe there's some of that too, but it's like, it's just repetition, it's just more reps. Like, I remember, like, classes that I took as a, as a PT, you know, uh, one-on-ones that I took as a PT, um, you know, the way that I read, the way that I, I wrote, everything is like always was much, much worse at the start than it is now. And you'll probably find that the same for yourself. It's like a, a little skill that I took on, um, you know, three years ago, probably more now, Jeez, like five years ago, is just chopping vegetables. You know, just, I'm not sure if you've ever seen, you know, the wee claw and just like trying to chop with a reasonable amount of pace and precision. And it's like, you know, at the start, you're absolutely terrible. It's just something over time. You know, ten years, I'm gonna be pop, 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 pop. But like, you have to, you have to stick with it and just do it really slow and really badly at first, no matter what it is. It's ping pong. I remember that ping pong table that first came into the gym, and I literally remember throwing it up and tapping it across, and then coming back and tapping it across, and really, really clunky and really awful and really uncoordinated. But it's about just sticking through that process until you get your first win and after that first win then it's just a bit stacking 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 the wins and that's uh, where another concept from the book the goldilocks rule comes in i'm not sure if you made notes on the Gold, goldilocks rule but essentially we are if we keep getting beat too hard and too often we get discouraged and if we aren't challenged enough we get bored and so there's a fine line between challenge and boredom and that's where you want to be. That's where we're going to be able to enjoy the reward from that process. Yeah, well, that's excellent. I want to give guys another quote direct from James Clear. I've got a good few quotes in here that I want to get through today just to kind of give people a real kind of insight into the author's thought, not just our thoughts about the book and the author himself. But here's another quote. You should be more concerned with your current trajectory than with your current results. If you want to predict where you'll end up in life, all you have to do is follow the curve of tiny gains or tiny losses and see how your daily choices will compound 10 or 20 years down the line. Um, end quote. And I think, again, that is that is super powerful. And kind of one thing I say to clients a lot on consultations is like, we're playing the game of momentum, not motivation. So it really all depends on like your trajectory, like what what path are you on? Like, how do we have momentum? Because the old saying, like, you know, miss a day, that's fine. Shit happens and life gets in the way. Try not to miss two days in a row because you miss two days in a row, the likelihood of two days turned into a week is, is exponential. You know, I'll go tomorrow, go tomorrow, go tomorrow, and then it doesn't happen. Because um, once you lose momentum, you have to overcome the point of inertia. I'm sure we've all seen the picture of the guy, I'm not sure, Atlas or somebody trying to push that big boulder up the hill. You know, overcoming that point of inertia, which is getting the ball rolling, getting the boulder moving is the hardest part requires the most energy but once the wheels start turning it requires less and less energy to keep it going um, and we see this all the time you know people this is essentially what falling off the wagon is when people kind of lose momentum it's not motivation it's the fact that you've lost momentum and here's, you here's, like you have to here's, start here, here's the counter idea to that and say it was same along the same principle it's not just it's not just that you've lost momentum you've gained momentum the other way and so what yes. you've done when you miss that second day is you're building the miss habit. So it's yeah. it's not it's not just, oh, again, now we're baseline. No, 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 no. Now you've stopped, we're into the middle, and now we're starting to work down the other way. And every day you miss, now there's momentum behind it. That's why the longer you leave it, the harder it is, because it's it's momentum in the opposite direction. Not only is it you're not stopping moving, you have to first harden the brakes, stop all the negative momentum, and then start pushing the other way. It's like we, it's a, we have to overcome the momentum of the negative, not just start from stop. Yeah, that's great. And that, that kind of triggered another one of James uh, of um, James Clear's um, concepts in the book was that every every action is a vote for who you want to be. So every time you take an action or you um, complete a habit, um, as in line, say, with, with your higher self or your, your you know the person that you want to be, that's a vote for yourself. And every time you choose not to do the habit, that's a vote for for your lower self or the person that you don't want to be, which and I think is, brings, is pretty interesting. Brings us right into identity. Yeah, it goes really goes really really deep into like the identity in this book, and so obviously that's who you see yourself as. And we start talking about our self talk then, when we start talking about identity, which is, I quit cigarettes. I don't want to smoke anymore. No thanks. I I don't want to fag. Is different than or no no thanks. I can't smoke. Is different than no thanks, I don't smoke. I'm not a smoker, as opposed to, 
I am a smoker who's currently not smoking. I am not a smoker anymore. I don't smoke. And so something as simple like that is like programming yourself as to who you are and start changing that identity. And something simple yeah. like that, that really doesn't matter. Yeah, because again, people like the goal is not the goal is not to complete the habit. The goal is to become is the goal is to change your identity. That's that's when true um true transformation takes place when somebody changed identity when somebody stops being the fat kid from school when somebody stops being the the yo-yo diet or when somebody stops being you know whatever it is you know when when you actually adopt the identity of being say like a, a gym rat or when you adopt the identity of being an athlete when you adopt the identity of being somebody who eats healthy when you adopt the identity um you know a, an empowering identity that is aligned with what you actually want to achieve that's true transformation otherwise you will always revert once once stress and uh, you know any sort of limitation once stress is applied you will always revert back to your habits and your old identity and that's why once the challenge is over a lot of people just fall back into their old ways and yeah. again it's normal but again and there's lessons and there's experiences and stuff to be learned um you know i feel like every like life is like a computer game like you do take the experience into the next attempt so you're like you're never starting from scratch um, it's much more effective obviously if you take take stock and reflect on your actions or behaviors and take the lessons forward to the best of your ability but you're never but you never essentially start from zero again but i think that is such a such a such an interesting point again about identity changing i think so, i may even have another okay. slide so well, i'll just expand on that a little bit so once you adopt an identity it's important that we adopt the right identity so now we've got you guys thinking about identity change or what identity do you have maybe you don't need to change it but it's very very important that when we adopt an identity that it's not something that's a uh, too specific so instead of thinking like for something for a talk's sake you know i'm a thin person it's like maybe thin is not good enough because what happens if you gain a couple of pounds now our identity starts to falter so here's a little bit i am somebody who looks after myself physically mentally and spiritually and so that's a little bit more of a positive identity because it means that thin is just not the outcome. We're not obsessed with the outcome. We're obsessed with the process, which is I look after myself continuously, physically, emotionally, and mentally, meaning that I don't bring myself physically to a point that I'm stressed. I don't judge myself too harshly um, to condemn my, my, my dharma, my spirit, who I am internally. But I also, you know, I don't take breaks to the point where my body starts to feel neglected and, you know, I don't let myself get unhealthy kind of thing. So it's like, instead of going, oh, I'm a thin person or I'm a fit person, it's like, well, what happens if you have an accident? You know, what happens if you can't yeah. be right now for a couple of weeks? It's like, okay, so look after yourself physically, emotionally, spiritually, and that will look like different things at different seasons of your life. Yeah, and you actually see this a lot, especially with athletes, and I've experienced it to, to a small degree myself. Like, once you lose your identity, say, as, a, as, a, as an athlete or a boxer or people become lost like people say have maybe played sports their whole life and then all of a sudden like you know they come to an age where you know that's no longer a thing or they can't perform at the same level they used to perform and then they just become completely lost and it can be quite sad actually you know these are the people who feel like their best days are behind them instead of ahead of them um and it can be quite sad in a lot of cases so i think that is also important here's another quote from james clear relating to identity one of the most effective things you can do to build better habits is to join a culture where your desired behavior is a normal, normal behavior. Your culture sets your expectation for what is normal. Surround yourself with people who have the habits you want, what you want to have, and you'll rise together. So this is kind of the concept, obviously, of just some of the five people you spend your time around, but you will adopt the identity and the beliefs of the people that you hang around with the most. So therefore, like if the people you hang around the most spend every weekend in the pub or every weekend getting takeaways or every week sitting on the or weekend sitting on the couch, that's probably how you're going to spend your weekends. So I think that's also um, an important thing to, to note when it comes about identity. The easiest way to change is to get around people who already display the the character traits and the, the behaviors that you want to adopt. Because I feel like we all know, like I feel like mentally, for me anyway, this is the thing that makes the most sense to me is like it's this constant battle between your higher self and your lower self. Like, you know, you, you know who your higher self is, you know who your true self is, the person that you want to be, the person that you aspire to be but you just get pulled back and being crystal talk about it in the kind of out with the devil, you know, the kind of the, the conscious, the angel and the devil on your shoulders. Like this is that constant battle that's kind of happening. Like, you know, the devil is encouraging you to drift and kind of move towards your lower self. Whereas, you know, your true self is, is inspired by 
God, whatever that means to people, and you know, you're kind of the push in that that direction of your higher your higher self and your true potential to become self actualized in, in the sense of becoming the best version of yourself. Um, I think that's powerful. Also, another little quote for you guys: identity change is the north star of habit change. The remainder of this book will provide you with step by step instructions on how to build better habits for yourself, your family, your team, your company, and anywhere else you wish. But the true question is. Are you becoming the type of person you want to become? The first step is not what or how, but who. You need to know who you want to be. Otherwise, your quest for change is like a boat without a rudder. That's why we're starting here. You have the power to change your beliefs about yourself. Your identity is not set in stone. You have a choice in every moment. You can choose the identity you want to reinforce today with habits you choose today. And this brings us to the deeper purpose of this book and the real reason habits matter. Building better habits isn't about littering your day with life hacks. It's not about flossing one tooth each night or taking a cold shower each morning or wearing the same outfit each day. It's about achieving external measures of success like earning more money, losing weight, or reducing stress. Habits can help you achieve all these things, but fundamentally, they are not about having something. They are about becoming someone. Ultimately, your habits matter because they help you become the type of person you wish to be. They are the channel through which you develop your deepest beliefs about yourself. Quite literally, you become your habits. Brilliant. That's a really, really good outlook. Yeah. So that's an, that's an extract from the book. And again, guys, I would really do strongly encourage anybody who hasn't listened to the book already, because obviously we can kind of talk about the ideas and the concepts and hopefully inspire somebody to take action to, to, to read the book, to become a reader. Um is ideally really the goal of these type or of listener. Uh, podcasts or listener, you know, to uh, a, con a consumer of good information, uh, somebody on the path of personal development. And I'll do my best. I'm pretty sure I have like a, a link somewhere that I can get you a free trial of Audible. So if I do have that, I'll have a look for it after this podcast and I'll put in the link uh, in the in the show notes below or in the comments below. Um, so you can get a free month of Audible or you get a free audiobook and maybe this will be the one that will get you into it. Um, I think it is extremely powerful because it's just knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb like you know people dedicate years and years of their lives to writing books and um comp compile like awesome. so much so much so much wisdom so much information and even like this but this one here to, to this atomic habits there's a lot of books out there on habits but supposedly according to people smarter than me they believe that this is this is the cream of the crop this is everything pretty much you need to know about habits in in this book so if you if you were to choose one book this supposedly is the best one and here's another quote guys the four laws of behavior change are a simple or a simple set of rules we can use to build better habits they are make it obvious make it attractive and make it easy and four make it satisfying so that's kind of where we're going to go next um if i can share my screen again so this is essentially so yeah, what do you think about them things? So first, make it a choice or make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy. So this kind of, as we kind of move towards the whole kind of Q routine reward, this is kind of a, power, a concept similar to uh, Charles Duhigg's book, uh, uh, The Power of Habit, I'm pretty sure it's called. Yeah, love that. Um, so, there, so there is a lot of overlap and, you know, James Clear, the author, does kind of pull on a lot of them ideas because, you know, truth is truth. Um I know well, that's, but that's, that's that's what i'm saying that's why i nearly wouldn't i nearly didn't get into atomic habits because i kind of felt like i already knew it but it's all the other stuff that's so valuable as well like it's not just that principle it's like how you frame it and like their perspective on it is so valuable yeah it's, it's little anecdotes and stuff as well the stories that kind of really drive the point home because i feel like one thing that, that i'm very aware of in my own kind of personal development journey is you know the fact that like people don't need people don't need new information as much as they need reminded of things they already know like i like you already know enough to live the life you want to live get whatever result you want to get we just forget you know we just forget and it kind of we become unconscious of these of this of information and we just don't access it so it's like just reminding people so like you can read the same book 10 times and get something different from it every time i think yeah, but also like you're you're a different person reading the book, so different things. Like I've listened to the David Goggins Can't Hurt Me book like three or four times. And like obviously big well, first time not so big a break between, but like since then, like, you know, a year gap every time and it, I'm in a different place and I like I remember like the last time I leave, I like I'm a granimal, I'm never gonna I'm never gonna go back and then you listen to it again, you're like, Oh my god, like I did go soft, you know, it's like it, it, it's so good to just kind of if you find a good book to and you really like the principles and you really like the perspective again, just kind of re 
mind yourself, remind yourself. Yeah, that's it. Just need you know, just okay, and it's also like don't feel bad about it. like this is this is normal. We're all human. Like you know, you're not like if you expect to read one book and the master the ideas in in five, six, seven, eight hours, whatever length length it takes you to get through the book, it's like come on, like you know, be a little bit more humble in your approach. Um because you and will see, probably have to come across see, these ideas many times. I seen a I seen a a meme and it was basically like a my toxic trait meme and it was kinda of going around. It's like my toxic trait is and like one of them was like my toxic trait and it was like somebody doing you know something incredible. It was like my toxic trait is I think I could do that first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. That, that's so terrible. It's like and again, most I'm like that with the other office. It's just this lack of it. It's like, oh I could do that. It's like, could you try it then? You know what I mean? It's like Oh, it's 1600 calorie diet. He's like, Oh, I can do that. I was like, Why don't you then? So do it then. Like, honestly, I think you'll find that there's more struggles and bumps along the road than you think. Like, the very simple stuff. Like, it's one of the reasons why I fell in love with Pilates is like, the simple stuff is so hard. Like, I remember with boxing, like, I skipped, I skipped out on all the drills because, it, like, I just, you know, I too big for my boots. You know, it's like, skipped all the amazing bits. It's like, you know, Ronaldo um, and Messi, they probably never skipped the drills. In fact, they just mastered them. That's why they're the best. Yeah, no, 100%. It's like to know to know what not to do is is not to know or something like that. Yeah. Something along the lines of that. Um, yeah, that I'm sorry to apologize. No, this, this, this is actually, this is actually the wrong, the wrong graphic. This is actually, um, oh. this is actually something that um, I hope would help people to actually, you know, ingress so like, you know, you get more out of one reading um than most would because again, especially if we're reading or listening in an unconscious manner, for example, like you know, like on the way to work or going for a walk, or we're not hundred percent focused, like we're not taking notes. Um, you know, obviously you will might only retain what about twenty percent of the information, but with doing things by thinking, acting and reflecting, you're gonna obviously retain a lot more information. So that was actually supposed to be my last slide. Um Spoiler. but we'll continue on the yeah, but we'll continue on the path of the the it's like the four laws of behavior change, like we're talking about, you know, um, Q routine reward, that kind of stuff. Okay. So, so what? So what do you think, Brandon? So in terms of like, so say obviously most of our listeners are, I assume, going to be kind of interested in health and fitness, uh, specifically weight loss uh, for most people. So what do you feel like are, say like the biggest traps that people fall into when it comes to say weight loss regarding habits relating to Q routine reward. So, so the big, big thing is, and here's one and it's ever changing and ever important is your environment. So you've got lots of different environments. We're, we're not fixed. We don't just spend time in one environment. So you've got many different environments that you negotiate through. And so the key is like, have you set them up? Or do you just kind of fall prey to whatever cues and routines and rewards that are set up by your environment? So are you, uh, you know, are you proactive or reactive to your environment? And so let's take, for example, at home. So if you spent an hour or two at home before lockdown, that might have been the height of it. And so maybe an hour or two a day in that environment is actually absolutely fine. So it's, re it's really set up for relaxation and for, you know, what would you say? What word am I thinking of? A depression? No. Oh, what am I thinking of? Okay, what do you do? Depressurizing. You know, Relax. After a long day, after a long day you de-stress. You de-stress. Yeah. De decompress. That's what it is. Decompress. Decompress. After a long day. So that's what your environment set up for because you spend all day, go, 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 go. Then what we do is we throw you into that environment via lockdown for eight or nine hours a day. And you're basically got an environment set up for relaxing and decompression. And so that's all you end up doing. So that's a problem. So the issue is not you. You're not the issue. The issue is that you never change your environment. You never set up new cues, new routines, new rewards. And that could be very, very hard because, again, maybe you're very limited space and all this kind of stuff. So it takes a little bit of wit in order to set up an environment towards a certain goal and that's where this planning and review is really really important and so if there's people but if you want to but if you want to create radical change the fastest thing like if you if you radically alter your environment for example like if you're the type of person you've got a messy bedroom or a messy kitchen or disorganized uh, place where you live because you know people say that you know the, our external environment is a, is a reflection of our internal environment mm -hmm. that's how you can create rapid change very very quickly like you know like you know clearing out like quickly cleared up my wardrobe there a couple of months ago you know, or kind of got rid of all the clutter, and it's just 
you just think better. It's just much easier then to implement change because then there is so many unconscious cues around us that trigger certain emotions or certain actions or certain behaviors um, that if they were just eliminated, you know, like I think, I can't remember who said it, it's, it's in this book, but somebody like, you know, the, the scientists say like the best, the, the best way to beat your habits is in the, is in the, in the shops. Like don't buy it. Don't bring it home. Like, you know, if you're the type of person that has easy access to crisps and chocolate and all these things, it's like, again, you're human. You're going to hit that point where you're going to be stressed out. You know, you're looking for, you know, a little bit of comfort food again, which is a normal human response. We're kind of maybe not beating ourselves up about these things, but just not exposing ourselves, not putting ourselves in these situations again and again and again, because like everything else, like it will pass, like the, the craving will pass. So if you just don't have access to it, you save yourself, mm -hmm. uh, you know, engaging in that negative behavior and making a vote for your, the person that you don't want to be. Exactly. And who I want to be, I want to be a person that can be around all that stuff and have it leisurely, you know, it's like not be, be all around all. And you have to be honest with yourself about where you generally are with that. So if you're trying to lose weight and you know, you're just not there yet, the smart thing to do is get rid of it all. And hopefully in time we can start, you know, bringing it back in, in dribs and drabs. But if you find it yourself, you're this lapse relapse kind of person. It's like, we will, we want to work on that. And there is personality types out there that just can't handle a little and often you know from uh, from the word go but everybody can develop this um you know spectrum approach this easy you know one two three not all or nothing zero to a hundred approach because i find a zero to a hundred approach it's like most people and most coaches will tell you it's like it's not a good long-term strategy because the rebound is way too hard and way too dramatic and way too rewarding to outweigh like a far too strict, less sustainable plan because, like I said, because due to the extreme nature of the progress you're going to make, is like it's only going to be short lived. And because of human nature, as I said, the weeds grow. It's very easy to backslide. It's like it's it's like you can just stay there for way longer. So it's this slow and steady incremental approach is what's best. And the best thing to do for that is be realistic about where you are, set up your environment accordingly. For most people, again, that's probably going to be absolutely little to no bullshit in the house and making sure that your plan is enjoyable. Because if your plan is not enjoyable, like if, if your environment is what you would call torturous, there's absolutely nothing there for you that you enjoy at all. You'll just run the opposite way or you'll drastically start changing the environment back to the way it was because you're in a tizzy. You know, oh, I can't deal. There's nothing here for me. So it's like, right, if you know you need, um, a chocolate bar you know it's like well then maybe get some protein bars in the house it's like and so again we're starting to build this identity of like who do i want to be what do, do i want my habits to look like and i know it's not sitting down and eating the six pack of whispers but you know i know it maybe eating some fruit a protein shake and a protein bar so that's what you want to have around because that supports what you're, yeah, what you're and, trying to and the the answer is always like it's more like more more conscious like being more conscious being more self-aware and understanding like what your what your cues are yeah that's because very because that, that, that is step one like the cues it is it is all about the cues like i've seen like for me like i know like you know like rice like chocolate rice cakes like i just always seem to overeat them so it's just self-awareness like it's probably just best not for me to have them i just love that yeah, 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 yeah. i mean there's just a certain type of certain type of food that you just you over and just so it's like take that on board and just try not to make the same mistakes again like that's that's a cue in my thing because again the rice cakes are healthy oh yeah. they're, you know, low calorie snack but it's not if you have four or five of them yeah. you know, or even i might have one come back later but then these are different cues and different triggers you kind of go to the press for a snack and it's like right what's available and you have you have these these what i would call domino foods it's like you know once you pop you can't stop type things and it's like right we'll just be sad it's like it's easy just not to have them sees that maybe have an alternative snack um close to hand or, or, or available and so I think it's something that some people would struggle with initially is like, right, it's easy to just say, be more conscious. It's like, how do I become a more conscious person? And that brings us into mindfulness. And so it's like meditation. It's something that we've harped on about since day D of opening up, fighting fit. And so it's like the big thing is like, you have to practice meditation. You have to practice bringing your attention into conscious awareness. And that sounds so wishy-washy, but that is backed by crazy amounts of science. Look up. Um, the science behind meditation on youtube like you'll find more information you can sh shake and stick with it's like this is not wishy-washy anymore and it will 100 percent change your brain and change how you act and behave and listen to the reports of people who've done it it sounds wishy-washy i know but if you struggle to become conscious and aware of your behavior and you're in this automatic rut meditation is how you get out of it 
or some kind of mindfulness practice, but meditation is a great place to start. And maybe even journaling and review is another great place. But the problem with that is, again, as we talk about like identity change, some people wouldn't even give meditation a go because yeah. their identity, I can't meditate. My yeah. mind's too busy. They've, they've, they've labeled themselves in a certain way that they're just not, they just don't re- fully realize how much that now is going to impact their actions, their behaviors, their outcomes, because they chose to label themselves or because they chose to adopt that limiting belief as truth. When the reality was, as you mentioned, like, yeah, because it was hard the first time. It was yeah. hard the second time. It was hard the third time. It was hard the fourth time. It was hard the 10th time. It's like, yeah, you got to practice. You got to be humble. You got to give it a go. And again, I don't want to preach here from, from my pedestal because again, I have not, um, I think I've ever managed a consistent meditation habit beyond a, a few weeks, but it's a tool that I can utilize. Like, for example, I used it the other day as a little bit of a long kind of stress event. I still had to do some work. So kind of to almost like to reset my brain before I went for a workout, I just done a quick 10 minutes meditation. And I literally had an amazing workout in the shed, like in the, so some alone time and really, you know, it was more, it was actually one of the best workouts I've ever had, not because of the workout, the workout was a good workout, but because, you know, of the, of the realizations I had kind of by spending that time alone myself. And I, before I meditated, I was feeling like I'm too stressed, uh, too tired to work out. And it just completely changed my state. Um, and it was very powerful. And again, it's not that I ha- not that I do it every day, but it's like it's a tool in the toolbox that I can pull out like a hammer. I don't need a hammer every day, but when I need to use a hammer. It's handy to, handy to have a hammer and, and know how to use it. 100%, yeah, no, I definitely agree. And I feel like that's really tie, tie that back in just to stick with the, the topic of the book. It's like, yes, yeah, like you have to become um, a mindful person. And so again, it's having this, this attitude. It's like you don't have a busy head. Your head has been busy. It's like you have had a busy head but that's not who you are and how your brain works. You can change how your brain works and studies show that. And so this idea of a fixed, fi- being a fixed being, nothing is changing about yourself. Things that are hard first time are always hard. It's like, that's not the case. And again, <laughs> the research and the studies are out there. Like you can literally become competent at pretty much anything. You probably may not ever peak into the top 1% due to genetics and personality differences and, all this kind of stuff. Like, there's so many, um, there's so many different factors that make people rise to the top. The, James Clear again talked about it in the book. He was saying, Usain Bolt, not Usain Bolt, Michael Phelps, and some other guy. I forget his name. And he was basically a medium distance runner. And so my, Michael Phelps and himself had the same ankle wound or something like that. And so, you know, in on paper, you know, the legs are fit for the same things. But realistically, Michael Phelps was six foot six or something like that, and this guy was five foot ten or five foot nine. And so every inch that you have in height is a disadvantage when you're when you're running. And every the longer your arms and your back is when you're swimming, is more muscle to help propel you through the water. And so the average height of a gold medal get medalist swimmer for the last ten years has been you know six foot six. And the average height of a medium distance runner has been like 5'10 consistently because, you know, there's some things you're just going to be good at genetically, but that doesn't mean yeah. you can't become a great runner. It doesn't mean you can't become a great swimmer. You just might not peak. And most people just yeah. end up with these genetic limits and limiting stories and beliefs that they don't even reach their potential. It's like, I don't care if you're the best meditator in the world, but are you the best you could be? Have you logged a exceptional amount of hours to then walk away and say, okay, well, at least that's where I'm at. It's like most people just first time, second time. Oh, that's my story. I'm not fit. I'm, I can't lose weight. It's like, despite the fact that you haven't done all the tools and listened to all the books and put in all the hours. Yeah. Because the end of the day, it is all about self-actualization, meaning just becoming the best version of yourself. It's you versus you. Are you the best? Did you do your best? Because that's all that matters. At the end of the day, if you know you've done your best, like we know from boxing and stuff, obviously, like, you know, once you go in there, even if you lose, once you've done your best, you put up a good fight. You didn't, you know I mean? You didn't um, shy away from the exchanges. You, you know, you, you stuck to your tactics. You've you done your best. You're pretty, you're pretty happy. You know, I've lost a couple of fights and, you know, people are giving you a pat on the back. Like, oh, no, I've done my best. So it's like, it doesn't really matter. Um, well, I, I kind remember, of bring it back on. Go on. Sorry. I, I remember going through a series of, last ditch efforts and like and again just not in a place where i was giving my genuine best and not in a place where i was being consistent and really just focusing on these short bursts and my identity then was somebody who wasn't fit who trained really hard to get fit for this fight and you know 
then obviously would take it very, very personally because it was personal because I did put my whole heart into it and I generally maybe didn't do my best. I did my best for a short period of time. But, and again, just mentally not in a good place to be able to say, oh, look, don't worry about it. Don't take it personally. But now, like going back and boxing with this kind of mindset, this growth mindset, well, look, I generally did my best. I generally put in the hours. I know, you know, I have X, Y, or Z to improve on. Coming away with a loss is a completely different experience than the latter of what I did before. Yeah, because because you're much you're more self aware and you have the ability to reflect and you apply the lessons to the next attempt. And again, you don't like it's you're doing it for the journey because it's part of your identity to to be a boxer, to be an athlete, to be a competitor. It's not about the it's not necessarily about the outcome. The 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 identity and the processes yeah. are more important in essentially than the than the I outcome. Know. There's nothing there's nothing more satisfying than focusing on the process process and then getting a competitive result. You're like, oh, it's working. That's great, you know, as opposed to the other side of it, which is, oh, it worked. Oh, fantastic. Great. Oh, I just got the result. It's like, no, no, no. That process, you once you know you've got a good process and that makes progress, that's like, that's powerful. You just know you can put your head right back down and get incrementally better over time. Like, that's so satisfying to me. Yeah. Okay, and again, just to really make sure that the people listening to the to the podcast kind of get some get some value and get some kind of actionable steps, I'm going to kind of read through um, some of these laws. So there's there's actually four laws. So Q routine, Q routine reward. Um, there's actually another one. Let's say four four steps. So we'll say the first law, second law, third law, and four fourth law. So this first one I'm going to talk about is how to create a good habit. And first things first, it's make it obvious. Then it's make it attractive. Then it's make it easy. And then it's make it satisfying. Okay. So first things first, law one in how to create a good habit. Okay. So people have actionable steps that they can apply after listening to this podcast. So law number one, make it obvious. James tells us we can implement intentions such as I will meditate first thing in the morning in my bedroom. Note where, when and where are super important. Be precise and increase to increase the odds of crushing it. You can also make a cue obvious by designing your environment. Perhaps you could put the cushion you'll sit on in your way from your bedroom to the bathroom so you trip over it. That's obvious. Or if you want to work out, put your gym clothes in the same spot. So, you know, it's so like you want to read before you go, go to bed, leave the book on your pillow. You want to go to the gym in the morning, leave your gym bag in the doorway so that literally it's impossible to, to, to forget to, to do it. Second one then is make it attractive. Think about all the research demonstrating the benefits you want, a calm mind, etc. You can also pair it with something you really enjoy doing, like drinking a cup of tea or coffee after you meditate. Another good way to join a culture where your desired behavior is normal behavior. And that's kind of obviously something that we're trying to do with fighting fit in the gym. Like, you know, we are a community of people who work out three plus times a week. That's just that's just what we do. It's part of part of the culture. Um, and again, also, there's a uh, this one here. You can pair it with something you really enjoy doing. And that's kind of where the concept I think we got from power of habit, uh, habit stacking kind of comes in. So it's much easier to attach a new habit to an old habit. You know, you brush your teeth every day. That could be a good opportunity. That could be a good trigger for meditation. Or it could be good uh, making a cup of tea in the morning. Could be a good trigger for doing your stretching or being mindful or whatever whatever the activity is it's law number simple. three really simple sorry just with that when i was making the baby's bobies and um, that was literally the biggest thing that made me start taking protein shakes again was that like, all right every time i make them, them a shake i'm making me a shake we're both getting shakes yeah nice that's good but that's perfect that's really really good and then law number three make it easy the easiest way to make it easy downscale your habits until they can be done in two minutes or less think silly small mini habits we also want to master the decisive moment optimize the small choices that deliver outsized impact think winning um no so optimize the small choices that deliver the outsized impact so again so rather than making the habit to go to the gym maybe you just make the habit put on my gym clothes yeah, and then once you put your gym clothes on, then maybe you know because you know, have the hardest part is the first step out the door. So maybe just put my gym clothes on and and go into the front door. That's all that happens. That's what I focus on. And then when I get there, I built momentum. I know you know I'm ninety nine percent going to go to the gym. That's something I actually did the other day. Abe. I was going to boxing and it was only like forty minutes left of the session. I was like, I'm going, and I'm just going. I'm just gonna. I'm practicing. I need to keep showing up. I was like, because I'm not. I'm out of the habit of showing up to that place. I'm just going to show up again and. I knew it wasn't even on the other day, but I blocked at the time, turned the key, went to the place and showed up. And it's like, I'm, I'm going to be here regardless. It's like this, at this time, this is where I'm at. That's pretty powerful. And that's, that's one of the, 
examples. I'm not sure if he talks about it in the book, but I've heard James Clear talk about it in podcasts or on YouTube and stuff. And it was basically this guy that he helped do this massive transformation. The guy had to go to the gym for two minutes, but he, he actually left it. He literally went to the gym for two minutes, like walked in the treadmill for two minutes and then left. But he'd done that for like three to six months, um, I think it was. But then over the course of, of that time, like he lost like, I don't know, 50 or 100 pounds or something. I can't remember the exact details. But he said, like, you know, people are saying, like, you know, why wouldn't he just do X, Y, and Z? Because he supposedly, he, I think he limited him. He said, like, no, you, you have to leave in two minutes, I think. You can't, yeah. you can't stay for long. Um, but he said it's even more powerful because he's building the habit of showing up. And that long term is more powerful than the short term result. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like, so, I've, I've, I've definitely gone to the, to the gym and, and bluffed it. Like, I mean, like, I was in the habit of going to the gym before work, like, for like 5 a.m. And obviously, I'm sure if any of you guys have ever worked out consistently at 5 a.m., you're not always your most chirpy, rappy self. Is it, but again, like I like, and whether or not it was the most effective workout that I've ever done, I showed up and worked out like like nearly every like five, six days a week consistently. And again, as I said, it's not about what I did, it's the fact that I was there consistently. And like when you're there, you might as well do something, especially if you're gonna be there consistently, it's like you're always gonna do something. And I have to say the same thing again, even though like say like say the last year, like I've kind of developed the habit of kind of exercising regularly. Um because exercise again for me is, is, is a tool that helps me achieve a certain state. And although I, I would definitely, if I was to be um, self aware or self critical, like my intensity probably isn't as good as as, as 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 high as I would like it to be. But I still show up. I still train at least three days a week, every week, no matter what, because now that is part of my new identity. Um, rather than not going, not saying like, oh, I'm not, I'm not really feeling today. I'm not going to do a great workout, but I'll do our workout. You know, and I'll show up and I'll, and I'll kind of keep the habit. And that 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 is that is super important. Um, so let me kind of get through this because I know you're 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 in a rush to go. So law number four: make it satisfying. Give yourself an immediate reward after doing your new habit. James also tells us to never miss twice. Very much like the idea of habit suicide. We discussed in Superhuman. Uh, I recommend use a habit tracker. Keep track of your habit streak and don't break the chain. So this is kind of even why, like in the Find Fit thing, like we have the habit tracker feature inside the app. Um, and why we have that say, and I think I mentioned it earlier, was, you know, if you miss a day, that's fine. Shit happens. Life gets in the way, but never miss two days in a row. Really try not to break the chain. So it's always better to do something than to do nothing. And you just kind of mentioned kind of just showing up, going to the place, even if it's only going to take five minutes. So there are the four laws of, so you, of thing, creating thing, a good habit. One thing I'd add to that. Okay, give, me, give, give me that principle again. Give yourself an immediate reward after doing your new habit. James yes. also tells us to never miss twice. Very much like the idea of habit suicide. So yeah. the whole the whole thing about giving yourself a reward, one thing that he goes into as well and says is don't give yourself conflicting rewards. So if you're going to the gym, don't reward yourself with a gym with a pizza. You know, it's like, you yeah. know we're, we're creating a conflicting identity. I'm somebody who works out, but yet no, you know, it's, or I'm somebody who looks after my body, but yet no, I'm somebody who's home and has a big pizza. It's like try and give yourself. Now again, look, initially, if that's the only thing that will motivate you, it's better than nothing. But realistically, it's like we want non-conflicting rewards so it's like if you have a you know if you do your first workout well then what we want to do is go home and have a nice hot bath you know or go yes. for a massage i think is an example that he gives you know if you're saving it's like don't save money and then engage in a bad spending habit by gambling or buying clothes it's yeah, like yeah. save and then maybe go buy, buy luxury products exactly yeah then go and do something you know it's a, a treat for yourself and hopefully you know on the cheap if you're trying to save or whatever yeah, no, that's interesting because as well, what he says as well as rewarding yourself, I think he also says like, don't reward yourself every time. So it's like, you know, like a, like a one in 10 kind of reward ratio um, because that kind of creates a little bit of novelty and a little bit of excitement. Um, it's almost like kind of like utilizing like, you know, the kind of gambling hack, like you don't win every time, but when you do win, it's kind of quite exciting. It's the kind of the, the pursuit of, of, of the dopamine, not necessarily getting the, getting the reward itself. So I was even thinking of like a, of like getting like you know, one of them like little ball machines you're really like you spin the thing and the th and the like the ball comes out with a little prize in it but like yeah. maybe like say you put a hundred balls in it but put put a prize in 10 so every time somebody comes to the gym and does a workout they can spin the thing and get a ball and one in 10 they might win a free you know a free protein bar a free protein yeah. shake or something like that but not every time and yeah, supposedly that's a really really good way to kind of ingrain in habits because mm -hmm. it, it kind of creates that little bit of a little bit of excitement good stuff well, man i really enjoyed this this was awesome we'll definitely do it again next wednesday i'm up i'm Love them back. Yeah, no, amazing guys. Thanks everyone who um, thanks everybody who took the time to listen to the podcast. Hope you got something out of it. If you whatever you want us to do the next time, do let us know. Um, I said I'm going to do out with the devil with Chris on the next uh, episode. Um, but again, make sure you like, share, 
tell your friends if you have any feedback we'd love to hear it and we will see you next time and sorry just on that so we're that's how we're going to leave it so we're not going to leave the guys with a book we're just going to leave it open for suggestions how we're going to post what what book are we going to do we well, same, because 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 we have because we have the next one so i already have it when the devil with chris so we have the i always want to keep the next the next topic in the pipeline but then between now and then i'm i'm, I'm open to suggestions i know you've talked about kind of can't hurt me david goggins i've listened to that book too it is quite interesting maybe people will be interested in that one do you have any any suggestions anything in the top of mind that you'd be interested in doing um i uh, will definitely have a think about it. i could sit here and flick uh, but we can have a think about it or again the guys could suggest in my library i have books such as the body keeps the score book about trauma meditation marks aurelius we got beyond training which is a very long book it's like 16 hours so the body keeps the scores like 12 hours it's all in your head is a very interesting book kind of about a uh, psychosomatic symptoms i really i really think that's a, a very good one for anybody with some limited beliefs you can definitely kind of worm yourself into a very very serious and real situation but just through a, a thought pattern or, or a belief or an identity or an idea Inner Engineering is another one by Sad Guru, which is kind of into mindfulness and meditation and yoga, basically you know, the, the whole practice of yoga, not just the workout. Yes, I, so I think that's, you know, they, any of those, if anybody wants to delve deep into that, or if you're, if any of those uh, tickle your fancy, let me know. Or even, or even more so, I would suggest, like, depending on like, what you're struggling with or what you're passionate about or what you're curious about, if there is anything that kind of tickles your fancy, like, say, like, you're, uh, a problem kind of occurs again, maybe we could, we might know a book. Because, again, we have read it, read it or listened to a, a lot of books at this point, so maybe we might be able to direct you uh, or point you in the right direction to overcome uh, a struggle um, or even, ideally, to chase your curiosity. That's kind of, like, last night I went down, like, a Nikola Tesla, <laughs> Nikola Tesla rabbit hole. Um, because, again, just follow your curiosity because it's it's much easier to learn and engage with information when you're curious yeah awesome leave there thank you so much all right guys appreciate your time and we will see you in the next one peace